In this video, we're going to drill into the latest best practices for implementing OpenID Connect in a single page app. And we're also going to show you how to run an end-to-end -end solution. Building apps for the browser is challenging due to the potential for security and usability problems such as dropped cookies. Um, we're going to show that a clean separation of web and API concerns is the best way to deal with these issues and will give you the apps with best capabilities. So let's have a look at the, the key behavior. So the single page app will use an API driven uh, open ID connect solution where you plug in a, a backend for front end API. So you don't need to develop this API yourself. It will be provided by Curity. Um, the result will be that the browser uses the latest secure cookies that the modern browsers support. These are same site equal strict cookies. And the browser sends these cookies in API requests. So this will be done in a manner that is transparent to your APIs, which will still work with jots. Uh, the result will be simple code in the single page app, minimal usability problems, and in addition, uh, there'll be no restrictions on where you deploy the single page app. You can deploy it to a content delivery network if you want. So let's have a look at the overall solution. And the key thing to understand is that although there's quite a few moving parts here, there's only three areas that you need to develop yourself. So obviously you need to develop the single page app. You also need to develop your microservices or APIs that receive jots. Um, and of course you need uh, to uh, deliver your web static content uh, somewhere, such as from a content delivery network. So we're going to show how to get this end-to-end -end solution working on a development computer. Uh, and this will result in good browser security and uh, also a good all-round architecture that is um, easy to scale to multiple apps. To run the end-to-end -end demo, there is a uh, Curity GitHub repository. So let's browse to github.com curity.io. There's a repo called SPA using token handler. And what this repo does is it runs the end-to-end -end setup that we've already described, uh, the architecture with cookies and tokens. Let's focus on how to get set up. There's actually a, a, an advanced token handler, but we're going to look at the, uh, the standard one. Um, and the first thing you're going to need to do to get set up is to add some development domains to your host file. So there are three domains here. www.example.com is the web origin for the single page app. api.example.com is where the APIs are going to be hosted. And login.example.com is where the Curity Identity Server will run. Um, you'll also need a license file for the Curity Identity Server. Um, even if you're not a customer, you can get one by signing into our developer portal, for example, with your GitHub account. And it's worth pointing out that this repo will work with um, other uh, OIDC providers as well, as long as they're standards-based and support the standards. Um, once you've been through those prerequisites, you then just need to run a couple of scripts to deploy the system, and then we'll be able to log in and have a look at the views and the behavior. So. Um, on my local PC here, I have cloned the repo, I've copied in a license file, so I am going to run those scripts. Um, and that will take a couple of minutes to deploy the system. Um, while that's running, let's look at a, a few coding key points here. Um, so um, there's three coded components here. There's an API, a single page app, and a web host. The web host just serves static content and isn't very interesting. Um, the API uh, is very standard also. So the API just needs to validate jots. Um, so this API uses a library that validates jots. And the thing to understand about APIs is nothing should need to change when you introduce the token handler pattern. Um, they just continue to va validate jots in the standard way. Let's have a look at the single page app. So this is a very basic React app with a few really simple views. I'm not going to show you any of those. The only two interesting classes are the API client used to make API calls and the OWASP client used to deal with um, logins and logouts and getting user info and that type of thing. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail here, but the thing to notice is that pretty much all of the OpenID Connect operations are one-liners. So uh, 
by using the token handler pattern, you get very simple code in your single page app and you're, you can then focus on your business logic and your views. Um, so let's close that and go back to our uh, repo here. And as you can see, everything is built now. So if I do a Docker PS, what you'll see is there's a number of components running here. Let's make that wider. Um, so the security identity server, token handler, and the components that I showed you. Um, so the only thing left to do really is to test this and then we're going to have a look at how it works. And to do the testing, I'm going to use the uh, Safari browser. This is often quite fussy about cookies and in the past there's been problems where, you know, under certain circumstances cookies get dropped and the usability is bad. So let's um, actually go and uh, we're going to sign into the single page app. So when I first visit www.example.com, um, I get an unauthenticated view. I can click sign in. Um, and there is a, uh, a pre-configured user called demo user with password password one, and we can sign in as that user. And let's talk about some um, behavior now. So um, firstly, um, let's look at multi-tab browsing behavior. So um, uh, when we when we browse across tabs and do multi multi tab browsing in a, in a modern SPA, there are no usability issues because the cookie is shared across all browser tabs, so that works nicely. Um, in the past, you might have used an ID token in your single page app to get the username and that type of information. When using the token handler pattern, you have to call the token handler API to get that in, instead. As we can see, this is a pretty fast operation. Um, and when we're calling APIs, we're not using tokens anymore. We're, we're calling APIs using same site cookies. So we can see that working as well. Uh, and you can also do things like sign out across multiple tabs together and so on. So the usability is all very good and reliable um, and uh, the code is simple. So the only thing left to do really is to look at how this solution works and some uh, the deployment side of the solution. We're going to finish up this video by looking at some token handler key points. If we return to the repo from earlier, there's also an SPA deployments repo. If you clone that locally, um, then you'll be able to see how the deployment from earlier was put together. The main thing to look at is the Docker Compose file, and we're going to go through these components very briefly. So firstly, there's a web host that serves up static content. Um, in a real world scenario, you might use a um, content delivery network instead for good global performance. There's the simple API we looked at that validates jots. The token handler API or OAuth agent is the main component that does the OpenID Connect work on behalf of the SPA and also issues secure cookies. Then during API requests, the um, single page app will call the example API and we've placed an API gateway or reverse proxy in front of that API. Uh, and within the API gateway is a small OAuth proxy component that deals with cookie concerns. We'll look at that shortly as well. Uh, finally, there's a instance of security identity server and a small database with the demo user that we signed in as. So that's the deployment um, all described and we're going to look at cookies next. Next we're going to briefly look at the uh, important cookie behavior. Um, if we go back to the GitHub repos, the, the main OAuth agent or token handler API we've been using is this Node.js utility API, which uh, anyone can deploy as is or customize according to their needs. But it essentially it's just a utility API that operates similarly to a traditional website that issues cookies to the browser. The key difference though is that this is only ever called during uh, Ajax requests from the browser. Uh, and that's quite interesting in terms of cookie behavior. So let's have a quick look at the key points about cookies. So the utility API issues multiple cookies for each of the old tokens. There's an access token cookie, a refresh token cookie, cookie and an ID token cookie. All of these are AES256 encrypted with a key only known by the token handler. And of course they're HTTP only so that they can't be accessed directly in the browser. 
However, because they're used in AJAX requests, there's a couple of interesting properties. One of them is that you can turn on the strongest security option, same site strict. And you can't always use that in websites because uh, it can lead to dropped cookies during certain types of navigation. Um, because these cookies are only ever used in AJAX requests, they're not needed during navigation. And so you can set the cookie domain to the API domain rather than the web domain. And this is quite good from a usability viewpoint because it means that uh, dropped cookies during navigation is, is never a problem. So um, that's the uh, key points about the OAuth agent described. Next, we're going to discuss the OAuth proxy. I'm going to finish up by looking at the API flow, which is illustrated here. Those of you who are familiar with security will know that we already recommend uh, a pattern that involves only returning confidential tokens to internet clients. This is called the phantom token pattern. Uh, and it involves using a plugin that runs within the gateway to swap confidential tokens for drops. Um, the token handler pattern fits nicely on top of this, um, where uh, we just add an extra layer that deals with translating secure cookies to reference tokens. To see how this looks, we can go to our deployment repo and this is how the API is configured within the gateway. So first of all, this OAuth proxy uh, plugin uh, runs. This translates from a secure cookie to an opaque token. Then a phantom token plugin runs. This translates from an opaque token to a JOT. And finally, the business API receives the JOT in the authorization header in the standard way. So in this manner, privacy is preserved and there's a very secure design. It may look a little complicated, but each layer is simple simple in its own right. So um, if you want to actually see the code for the OAuth proxy, this is available as well here. The end-to-end um, -end solution that we demonstrated is using this Lua plugin. You can actually view the code in here uh, to see how it is uh, handled. The code is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a bit of decryption, etc. But um, again, these utility components, all you need to do is deploy them. You don't need to write any code yourself. So we've reached the end of the, the video. Um, there's plenty more information on our websites. So for more information, see our guides. But thank you very much for listening and good luck with your SPAs.